So now we have a lightning talk about um, the prospects of KDE in uh, automotive and other um, embedded, uh, traditionally embedded uh, Linux applications. Uh, Agost Agostin. Agostin, okay. Uh, yeah, the state's yours. Okay. Uh, thank you for the organizers to allow me to, to have a few minutes with you. Um, There used to be a time in which KDE uh, had a lot of impact. Uh, a time in which uh, the desktop was awesome, right? Everybody was talking about the desktop in Linux. And um, yeah, it was a small world, but we were in the core part of that world. And today, uh, still the desktop and KDE is very important obviously for all of us. It's in the center of our hearts. And despite the fact that today we have a better software than ever, that we have more experience than ever, that our community is more solid probably than ever it was before, that we do a few things extremely well, uh, somehow the focus of the software industry, the open source industry, is somewhere else. Uh, so we rock, but our music is not heard anymore by most people out there. So, yeah, we still rock, right? We do. So, thinking about uh, how we can put KDE back into the center, the core, the focus, right? Bringing attention for others and, and show all that cool stuff that we do and have, again, a lot of impact, not just in our own world, but also beyond that. I was thinking about for, for some time, and those of you who know me, uh, I've been fighting for some years, for instance, to go to the corporate desktop and fight a lot for, for promoting uh, the kiosk mode and other things. So I was thinking, okay, look, uh, we need to find this place in which we can go and we are alone there and it's so cool that we can even swim completely naked, right? We can, because we are the only ones there, so, so we can really enjoy, right? And bring back some excitement because at the very end, as a group, you need a lot of excitement, not just internal excitement, but also uh, external one. So I've been working the last uh, year and a half in automotive basically doing consulting in processes, how to build distros, and how to be efficient in the software delivery. And I want to explain you in two or three minutes why I think automotive could be a great place for us to be. And what has changed or is changing in the automotive industry that what it used to be an impossible environment for us, it's becoming a uh, possible environment and will become or might become a great environment for us. So automotive is going through a disruptive transformation. Just like we know we lived uh, in some other industries before. Uh, I'm not go I don't have time for going through the details, but everything that is happening in automotive, we have seen it in one way or the other in previous disruptive transformations in other industries, especially when we think about in open source. Uh, so now that we have gone through the process of, of that disruption in other industries, what I believe is that, and, and many, many open source people that I s somehow involved in, 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 in automotive believe, is that there is an opportunity there for people like us. And like always happen, if you hit first, you hit twice. So one of the things that are very, very important that has changed in the last couple of years in automotive is that now there are open collaborative ecosystems that are trying to create assets, code, not just code, but also code, together in a collaborative and open way with open source licenses. And that was not there before. So those ecosystems are places in which individual developers can play. Obviously, if you work for companies, you can play also. But foundations or associations 
uh, communities like us can play too. That was not there before. Uh, there are basically two that I would like to mention because I've been involved in, in both of them in one way or the other. And yeah, I would like you to take a look because they are creating, I, I, in, Katie, in the Katie Spain uh, talk, the Academy S talk, I show a Raspberry Pi 3 with a touch screen uh, uh, and prototype an R&D system for automotive that is being created in this case for AGL and that is being used in the R&D departments on, of some of the OEMs that uh, are part of ecosystem. So, and also one very attractive point is that these environments are full of potential investors in KDE and they are putting in these environments millions of dollars for, to make developers like us uh, to create technologies that they might use or might not in the coming three to five years. Uh, an interesting point is that in automotive, Q is the number one toolkit. So it's a place in which we can go there and not talk about Q. We don't need to sell Q. We just need to sell what we do at KDE because Q is already there. The interesting point, so, so the following question is, so why do Q need us, right? And there is an interesting point there in terms of the license because as you know, uh, and we were part of that, right? Uh, Q changed the license towards GPLv3 uh, model, GPLv3 based model. And as we have seen in other industries with GPLv2, for instance, uh, the reaction of the industry towards openness in terms of license is always very negative. Exactly like it happens in other industries before, that reaction came into the in automotive industry. And they have basically banned uh, GPLv3 based code and models, right? So Q now has a challenge in this open environment and it's a, it's a battle in which we can really, really help. So there is an, I see as a need for Q to have something like KDE going there, working there and helping fight the battle. A battle that, in other words, they're gonna lose anyway. Just exactly the same thing happened a few years ago again with the GPLv2 kind of, uh, base licenses. They're gonna lose that battle. It's just that we can help to fight it. Uh, and in, all, in these open environments, all these companies, I, I always put the case of the Japanese companies because they are, they are getting really, really involved. Basically, they are learning about open source. So they are using those environments to uh, put engineers there to, to, to try to uh, get them out of this uh, uh, left behind kind of attitude that they have. They understand that they need to change. They are heavy open source consumers. Now they are trying to take their steps from being consumers to being producers to being contributors. And they see these environments as learning ecosystems. So we have an opportunity there to do something that we do really, really well, mentoring, helping others to uh, get into open source. And one of the key goals of these environments is to create uh, ecosystems of application developers. One of the main needs that OEMs and Taiwan's in the automotive industry see is that in five, three, five years, they will have to increase the number of features that they provide to the consumers in the cars. And there are not enough applications out there or developers working on applications for automotive. So the, one of the main goals of these ecosystems is creating those ecosystem, the, those um, conditions for application developers to come. That's why they are investing so heavily in SDKs. And we are exactly that. We are uh, nothing but an ecosystem of application developers in some, in some sense. So in many ways, our nature, our values, our goals match with what they want, what they need. So, if tomorrow I will, uh, tomorrow, yes, tomorrow, uh, no, well, maybe tomorrow, if not Monday, 
I will bring that Raspberry Pi that I brought to the, to the Academy, yes. And you will see how, how much everything related with the UI sucks. I mean, it sucks big time. I'm, I'm amazed that any developer has really developed that and, and, and put it there. And now they are showing it all over the world. Believe me, seeing four or 500 people in a private event in the CES in, in, in Las Vegas freaking out with uh, the, the, this kind of system, with this kind of layouts, it's something hard to digest. We really can kick some butts there. Uh, so, yeah, I will bring it, I will show it to you, and you probably will freak out the same. It's like, we, we can do very well in that kind of environment. So, I see that as a way to uh, get in there and uh, bring back some attention based on what we do best. Uh, we would have to learn a few things, obviously. Uh, the whole ecosystem is learning about open source, so we will find uh, that not everything is perfect in many ways, but they are committed to go into the right direction, at least in these R&D environments. The production is a different story. But we, again, it, it's nothing very different to what happened some years ago in, in different industries, right? You start with R&D, trying to share cost in R&D, and then that rolls out, that open source model rolls out into production. First, you think that you can control it, and then you realize that the model controls you. And then you adapt your business models to this new model. So uh, working on this 24-7, uh, I see uh, a great place to start with today and hit, hit hard, hit twice. So that was basically my message. I'm done. Thank you for listening. If we have questions. So, so as I understand it, the, the mission of your talk is to, to inspire us and want us to do these things. And I think many in the audience probably, you got that point across. I think probably many people in the audience feel that's something maybe we should do and that's a good idea. But the problem is when they now leave this room and they take it with them, we should do that, but they don't know exactly how to go about that. So what are the concrete steps we need to take? What are the work items? What should we be doing? Who will take point on that? Okay, uh, that, was part, out those tasks. that was part of my, uh, in, in Academy S I had uh, like half hour or 45 minutes, so I had a couple of slides of the first steps. Let me, let me summarize that very quickly. Uh, in Embedded, and I'm not sure it's going to last very lo for very long, but in Embedded, uh, they use declarative operative systems, right? So, and there are a couple of them that are quite popular. Uh, the most popular probably not right now is Yocto. So for those who comes from the package management-based operative systems or distros, uh, it's, it, it is a, there is a learning curve. So Qt is well-maintained there. Obviously, there is a huge business model around Yocto and Qt. We should get there with KDE. Uh, not with everything, but at least enough so we can create demos to start to bring attention and also learn from our side. That's one point. And the second point is we have to go through several, uh, to, we have to take the journey to get into this kind of ecosystem, see how, seeing how they work, uh, what are, how we can fit there, what kind of applications might be interesting that will make a hit quite easily. Uh, and then, um, there is a lot of mindset also. Uh, embedded has always been like very restricted because we think it's very close, right? But especially in automotive, now connectivity comes in place. And we know, for example, from the server world first or from the mobile world that when connectivity came, everything changed. So what today we know as automotive or what yesterday we, we, we thought it was automotive is not going to be the same. So, we, and so if we are, we need to understand that they are going through a process that might end up like the mobile world or might end up like the enterprise world or might end up in a completely different way. So most of the people here, when they approach this kind of new environment, says, you know, if it's not fully open, if the rules are not fully clear, I don't want to get in. Uh, we don't, yeah, we need to understand the situation, how they are going and, and sh get the attitude of let's help them shape it. So this end up in a different way 
that the mobile has ended, and it, it looks like more like the enterprise world. So I think those three points are, and I have another four, three or four. I can I can I can describe them in in the slides. I can put the Spanish slides or or, or just even translate them. So how about we we pick some sort of industry event in that domain, and we try to get a boost there, and then we figure out what do we want to show there, what actual things do we need to create to have that to show, and then show it and talk yes. to people. Yes, it's uh, the industry events, they are like two, three different classes, right? The Linux one, very focused on Linux, mm -hmm. those are easy to reach for us. Yep. Uh, uh, Linux Foundation through AGL or the, G the Geneva Alliance would be more than happy to host us there. Uh, mm -hmm. So we can show what we do. Uh, it would be showing it on top of their distro, basically. Yeah. And then there is a second type of events, which are industry events that are very focused on specific areas related mm -hmm. with software. Now autonomous driving is very important. Those, it's, it's going to take us a little, uh, it's a little harder to get there. Uh, but if we go through the f first step, maybe they help us to get there also. There are companies that are like, like the one I work and others that are getting into, that are in, into that industry, I think that Q, the Qt ecosystem would be also very interesting to take us there because they are already going there. There is a third type which are fairs and mm -hmm. well I'm not sure that's very interesting for us at, uh, at the beginning. Well then let's pick one of the Linux ones, package frameworks for the distro, get Plasma Shell running on it and take a system there and show it and talk to people uh, about what the framework I does. would love to see a couple of engineers uh, and, and, and I definitely will help with everything I have. It's, uh, okay. it's, uh, it's, uh, it's something what we can really do. And it's not that hard. It's, I mean, it's not that hard. Yocto is not an easy, it's not an easy one. Mm -hmm. Especially coming from the, dis the distros that works, uh, going through Yocto, it's a different story. But hey, the embedded guys that uh, love that thing because it, the world was really awful for them before that, that Yocto thing came. So, yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, when you say Yocto is hard, do you mean the, like, the governance of Yocto or do you uh, mean getting Yocto, your own meta layer Yocto, into it? Yocto, uh, my, in my opinion, and if there is somebody from Intel here probably wouldn't agree with me, uh, Yocto is very expensive to maintain. Yeah, so, because I've been working on Yocto for the last six months and I wouldn't say it, it's that steep a learning curve, so. <laughs> uh? Yeah, okay. So it's, it's very expensive to maintain. That's something they are working on, but uh, today it's, uh, it's a huge challenge. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask, um, what do you think if um, instead of the automotive industry losing their resistance to GPL3, they decide to buy commercial licenses for Qt, which is obviously great for the Qt ecosystem because it, it brings in money to the Qt company and we all uh, benefit from that. On the other hand, um, how would the K KDE software, free software, fit in if, if those automotive companies are using commercial licenses and still avoiding the GPL3? Okay. Um The, basically how I see it, or in, short, in, in a few words, the, the, the cute model is if, in terms of license, and that could he, create some debate. As I see it is, either you contribute back with code or you contribute back with money, right? So on the commercial side, we want Q to be a sustainable uh, project, right? So it makes sense that e people contribute back with money. But given the amount of software and innovation that it's coming and especially will come into the automotive industry, a lot of that innovation is not going to happen inside the, the, the companies. It's going to happen in open environments where a lot of companies and, 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 and volunteers share that. Exactly the same that happens in the enterprise world. It needs to happen like that. It's in, it's, there are no Googles, none of them. They are getting into, they are turning into changing and getting, becoming uh, software companies, but there are no Googles. So that is not going to happen, in my opinion. So in, in those environments, the GPLB3 model is a very good one. 
So I see that, our, and I see ourselves fitting in those R&D environments. In the same way that companies are not shipping KDE software in their corporate desktops, we can make a very nice living without having our software shipped in our cars. And, and when I see our software, I mean the applications, right? But because there are a lot of software that we do in corporate desktops are there, a lot of software. It's just that it doesn't have the stamp of KDE. So it, the same might apply, but then we get hired by those companies. Those companies finance back their projects somehow, allow people to come to these kind of events. I mean, there is a lot of value in being visible and play act, an active role in R&D environments and get back. Maybe, maybe our role is not to get a KDE desktop in a car. Maybe that's part of it, how you define success. I had a, a, a talk, a community keynote, right, in 2012, defining what is success. Maybe the success should not be to have KDE desktop in the car. Maybe. So I guess uh, we can wrap this session up here. Um, uh, we're actually running about five minutes late for the next session, uh, which, is, which is the last one for the day. Um, so, sorry? Yeah.